Good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I will be showing you how to build a universal data lake house uh, with uh, Apache Xtable which allows you to interoperate between Hoodie, Iceberg and Delta. After that uh, we will be using MinIO as our object store, we will be using Hive Meta store to catalog our data and I will be showing you how to query the data using Trino. So all of that is there in the video. I'll focus on configuration settings and explain everything in this video. So this video would be a little bit long. So I hope you are excited and I hope you find the value in the content. So let's get straight into action. All right. So hopefully you guys uh, are now seeing my screen. Um, okay. So now what we'll do. Okay. Let me uh, give me one sec. Okay. So the first step that we need to do is we need to generate some fake data, right? And what we can do is we can uh, run this Python file called datagen.py. This will generate some sample data set for us. So what I'll do is first, let me delete uh, this uh, folder called order so that we start off fresh over here with you. So I'm just gonna delete this, okay. So here you can see this datagen.py, right? Uh, I will simply right click on my IntelliJ and uh, run this Python file. And here you can see I have these folders and some CSV file, which is separated by tab character. So step one, uh, please go ahead and generate some data. Step two, we have a Docker Compose file, as you can see over here. This will uh, spin up your Hive Metastore, Trino, Coordinator, and Minai. So head over to your terminal. And now what you can do is you can say Docker Compose up hyphen hyphen build minus D, which stands for run all the container in the background. Uh, once that is done, what you can do is now you can head over to localhost and now you can go to localhost 9000. This will show you a beautiful uh, MinIO UI. The username should be admin and the password should be password. After that, what you can do is click on buckets, click on create buckets. Uh, let's click here, click on create bucket and name the bucket as hoodie test. And let's, let's click on create bucket. So now you have a bucket to play with. If you head over to localhost 8080, you should see the Trino UI. As you can see the Trino cluster overview. So, uh, so far what we have done is we have generated some fake data and then we made a MinIO bucket and now we're gonna learn how to ingest data uh, into our MinIO bucket using a tool called Delta Streamer. Uh, so let's take a look at that without wasting any further time. So I'll go to this Spark Summit job, uh, this particular file and there's a Spark Summit over here so which I'm gonna explain you. Okay. Over here, we say that, hey, I'm interested to use the, this particular class, or.apache.hoodie.utilities.streamer, hoodie streamer. Uh, we're using two packages. Uh, one is the Spark uh, hoodie bundle package 3.4, since I'm using Spark 3.4. Uh, but if you're using a different version, make sure to change these numbers. And then I'm using um, AWS Hadoop package. After that, I provide the property, uh, the Spark config.property file. As you can see, I'll open that up. In this particular file, I define my MinIO access, secret, uh, S3A, endpoint, etc. So all the settings are, def are defined over here. Now, if I again go back, now the jar files. So in order for us to interoperate and in order for us to have Delta Streamer build the metadata for Iceberg and Delta, we are providing these jar files through a command hyphen hyphen jar. And then uh, we are using the hoodie slim utility bundle jar. Table type is copy on right, target. This is where my uh, universal data lake house will be built, right? On this particular bucket called hoodie test, which is on MinIO. The table name is gonna be bronze order. I'll be running that in the absurd mode. I'm enabling HiveSync and the HiveSync tool class, I'm using io.onetable.hoodie.sync.onetable sync tool. So this allows us to build the metadata for Iceberg and Delta and interoperate between all of these three uh, lake house format. So hopefully made sense. Uh, then we have a pretty standard settings over here. We are ingesting from a CSV. So we are using source. If you're using Parquet, you can do Parquet, JSON, Kafka, etc. I define standard hoodie settings, record, pre com key, etc, etc. And that's about it. Uh, and here, one setting that I would like to cover is this one. Hoodie.onetable.format.2.sync is set to Delta and Iceberg. So this means that this is telling Delta Streamer that, hey, you would be performing after every single commit, build the metadata for Delta and Iceberg. So I could interoperate. So I can copy this Spark submit job. I can come to my terminal. I am in the current directory. And now simply by pasting this in the terminal, uh, this should start ingesting data into our MinIO. So as you can see over here, now currently the data is being ingested. I can go to object browser, 
go to my bucket, hoodie, DB, table name, and I can see all the partitions already. So let's wait, wait for this to complete, should be done in a couple of seconds. Okay, it's done. And now if I refresh my Minio bucket, uh, here you can see I see a folder called Delta Log. This is where the metadata for Delta table is. And also you will see a, a, a folder called Metadata. Uh, there's actually a lot of files here, so I wish I could, I can find this in, oh here, Metadata. And here you can see the iceberg related metadata. Now to verify whether this was working fine or not, I have given you to Python file, read underscore delta. Uh, this particular Python file, as you can see, very straightforward, uh, creates a Spark session. I set uh, the MinIO access secret and all those stuff. After that, I simply read the table as delta. Now, if, the, if everything was uh, fine, I should be able to see this uh, table as delta. So I can say read underscore delta dot py. And then I should see the same Spark data frame over here. And similarly, while this is running, I also do have a Python file for you, which you can again try, which is called read iceberg.py. So allow me to navigate there. Before that, let's see. Again, here you can see the delta, read underscore delta.py worked fine. Same, same thing, I have a read underscore iceberg.py, which reads the table as iceberg. So if I run this now, uh, Python 3 read underscore iceberg.py. So uh, the same thing, right? I would be able to see uh, the, 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 the data frame object on the console, as you can see. Just zooming out a little bit, as you can see, right? Perfect, okay. So you have you basically, so far you have learned like, hey, how you can you know, uh, query and build a universal data lake house. Now, let me show you the Trino part, okay? So uh, what I will do is, uh, you know, to do the Trino part or to show you the Trino part, uh, actually, I'm gonna launch a Jupyter Notebook because it will make my life a little easy and uh, teaching easy. So let me just copy this in uh, over here. Give me one sec while I just set my Java home. Give me one sec. Export Java home. Okay, so now we are ready. Okay, so let me clear this. Jupyter Notebook. Uh, again, I could basically exec into the container, but I think I feel like this is much more easier and, I, and you guys can see things, right? Much more in a clear way. So let me start the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, for this, you need two dependencies, a uh, pip install Trino and then pip install IPython SQL. So this allows me to run you know, SQL from my Jupyter Notebook. So I'll say load external SQL and then I'm gonna provide in the connection URI, which is Trino. The username is admin. We're doing it localhost, AD, AD and the default. So let's do show catalog. Here you can see, I see all the catalogs that are available, hoodie, delta, and iceberg. Now I'm gonna say, uh, use the hoodie catalog, and then I can simply run this query, which says, select everything from uh, select everything from the bronze uh, table. And here you can see, I was able to query my data through Trino. Now let's take a look at the delta part, right? How do you query the same data from Trino as a delta? So for that, what we need to do uh, is we need to register the table in the HMS. And uh, what I will do is I would have this command for you. Give me a second. Yeah. So I'll explain you what this does. So this command right here starts a Spark SQL with the Delta uh, package. And then it uses the Hive Metastore. And here you can see I provided the Hive Metastore URI. So I need to register the table, right? So now let me copy this Spark SQL open my terminal over here, simply paste this again, uh, super easy, right? And now I will create a schema called delta underscore DB. And this is the path for, uh, for my warehouse, right? So let me, let me do that. And now we're going to define the delta table. So I'm saying create table delta underscore DB dot orders using delta. I'm using the word delta. And this is the path to my universal data lake, right? It's an iceberg, delta, and hoodie, right? I can interoperate. So now we'll cl click on that, put this one here. And now this table is now registered in the HMS. Now you can say show database. I can run Spark SQL, and I'll also show you in the tree now. Show database, I can say use, as you can see, use delta db. And then I can say show tables. And then I can say uh, select count everything from orders. I should get the number over here soon. As you can see, 400 records. Now I can do the same thing on Trino as well. I can say show catalog 
use delta that's the catalog that i'm using and this is the you know schema uh, that i want to use show tables and then i'm just running the simple query over here as you can see we are running this query and we are now able to read the same table as a delta so this video uh, has all the exercise uh, material so you can try this out we, sh we saw how to uh, ingest data from a csv source into minio and build a universal data lake house after that we also saw how we can use trino to query the data as od or delta Thank you so much for watching. All the resources code could be found on my GitHub. And also I'll try my best to write an article where everything will be explained. That's it for the video. I hope you have enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.